AMT's 1961 Ford Ranchero Custom, coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Model Kit fans. Welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies What's in the Box edition as we unbox this 1997 re-released edition of the 1961 Ford Ranchero Custom. Now this is another one of those cool old kits that I brought off of my shelves at home to show all of you in case when you're out there and you're in Cyberland and you're maybe on eBay or in a hobby shop or at a garage sale or whatever and you come across one of these, I am going to let you know firsthand what's in there before that opportunity even arrives by opening up this very box and showing you, my wonderful YouTube audience, exactly what's in the box. But before we do that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. We want to get this thing way up in the Google rankings so that anytime anybody is interested in model car building, be it somebody new to the hobby or one of us old veteran guys that have built almost everything 40 times over, we want to get that thing up there so that everyone can see it. So help us out by getting this video up to 100 likes and maybe a bit more after that. And that dream of mine and yours may be possible. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop rambling and get into this ranchero. So let's go down to our table and open the lid on this beauty. All right, let's jump in the time machine once again and head back to 1961. As we look at this amazing AMT 1961 Ford Ranchero Custom by AMT under the RC2 label. Now this kit came out all the way back in 1997, but you can still find this thing on eBay and wherever else. I'm not selling this, this one's mine. Hands off! <laughs> Hands off! No, anyway, okay. So, as we look at the box side here, we actually get a, a pretty cool write-up. It says, 61 Ford Ranchero. The 1961 Ford Ranchero was designed to be an economical work truck came with a 144 cubic inch six cylinder engine that gave the truck great economy but still allowed it to handle a respectable load. AMT has taken this mild-mannered work truck and made it into a wild custom street machine. We've gotten rid of the light duty six cylinder engine and replaced it with a big 427 cubic inch V8. The next step in customizing was to let go of the skinny wheels and tires and replace them with custom wheels and performance tires. To further the customizing trend, there are custom parts like a tonneau cover. The kit includes decals that allow you to do a custom paint job. This truck is still a favorite among collectors, enthusiasts, and customizers. So there you go. Nice little detail. Now I say decal because I'm up in Canada and I don't know any better. So there you are. 61 Ford Ranchero. Side of the box here looks like, of course, the top of the box. And then here's the photographs for you know what the kit includes so they say custom graphics which are these scallop paint jobs custom slot wheels a detailed interior and the tonneau cover going on the back if i pronounce this wrong let me know time and time again <laughs> and of course we got the barcode noting that this came out after the the 70s 80s i think it's when the early 80s they started with the barcode. You can always look that up. Okay, skill level 2 kit requires paint and glue for ages 8 and up. So now I'm gonna just take the top off here and we're gonna be looking at the kit parts in a minute. There's of course the nice decal sheet, decal sheet I guess. Okay, move that out of the way and we will zoom the camera all the way out. Ooh. and look at the instructions. So with these instructions again we have a great big write-up here which just continues the story from the outside of the box. So I'll try to hold this here. You guys listen along and maybe you can read, I don't know. I mean I know you can read but you know with me holding it in front of the camera is what I'm saying. Okay the 61 Ranchero just might rank as the most economical no frills utility car pickup of all time. Based on Ford's original compact, the Falcon, which debuted in the 1960 model year, 
The Ranchero came standard with a 84 and 85 horse, 144 cubic. Sorry, let's try that again. Uh, the Ranchero came standard with an 85 horse, 144 cube straight six, which according to original Ford ads was capable of 38.3 miles per gallon. The Ranchero's high performance upgrade was the 101 horse, 170 cubic inch six, which equipped with either the standard three-speed stick or optional two-speed Ford, Fordomatic, was hard pressed to get the Ranchero to 60 miles per hour in less than 20 seconds. Performance was not the Falcon's appeal in 1961. Economy cars from the big three were hot. The horsepower race had begun in the 1950s, slowed down at the end of the decade, and for a few years, miles per gallon were in vogue. With a Ranchero, a buyer could have his economy and haul things around courteously or courtesy of a six-foot box with 31.5 cubic feet of load space, all for the retail price of only $1,887, brand new. For the, many of the, for, for the many of these reasons, this unique vehicle of 1961 is still popular today. For those who want something a little less practical, this version of the Compact Ranchero gets a 70s street machine transformation. Our customized cargo carrier features a potent rat a potent engine swap. The original Economy 6 gets the Deep 6 in favor of a monster 427 Chevy V8 rat motor. Down where the rubber meets the road, gleaming custom hubs wear oversized tires. Gleaming custom hubs wearing oversized tires replace the stock roller skate wheels. The result, a powerhouse pickup that belongs in your model collection. Enjoy your highly detailed 125th model of the first compact car based pickup with an eye-catching rubber burning twist. I will, and I'll get rid of this camera strap out of our vision. <laughs> but it's funny they used a uh, 427 Chevy V8 when um, there was a ton of great Ford 426, 427, 428, and 429 cubic inch motors. Or was a 426 not a Ford motor? But anyway, <laughs> I know there was a 789. Okay, so enough of that. We start off with our engine. Uh, and it says the color scheme outlined in these instructions is for reference only as intended to complement the deck color choices provided. This version of the famous Ford Rancher was truly a custom vehicle. Paint your kit as indicated, or feel free to be creative as you would like with your own color scheme. Okay, anyway. Um, so we got an air cleaner carburetor, the fuel intake, intake manifold, right and left engine block, an oil pan, front cover, uh, cylinder heads, and valve covers. Interesting. Gold, red, 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 cylinder heads, flat black. Why wouldn't they be painted red with the rest of the engine? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so then your starter and your belts, fan belts, and of course the engine with the, the headers over here. Now this is an older kit, so the undercarriage is a complete single chassis. Hang on, that's step six. Okay, so step... Interesting. Starts at step two, then goes to step three. So what was step one? Okay, so interior is step number three. So again, this is an older kit. So the whole interior seats and everything are molded in a bucket, as it were, with the interior panels molded to the side very lightly. It comes with the seat belts, um, dashboard, steering column, and steering wheel. It says remove the color mounted shifter if you are using the optional stick shift, which is right there. Okay, then it's got the tires. Now these tires were updated for the 90s because the original 70s probably tires would probably be uh, the Goodyear um, polyglass tires. So for the 90s, of course, they updated it to these wide GM gator back type wheels. I believe that was what they were called and of course the mag wheels are very 1990s style 
You know, the 90s had the most mag wheels up to that date ever in any catalog. <laughs> I remember some model or uh, some car magazines I had had like 400 mag wheels at one point on a page in an ad. Just crazy. So anyway, here you get this optional custom roof you can glue on, which got the tuck and roll and that kind of thing, and a scoop. Uh, or you could build the body basically as a stock ranchero here. And then you got your antennas, your really cool mirrors. But you can see again, this is a 60s type model. The front glue's on, there's no inner wheel splash things. Um, glass pops in, it's a one piece shell. To make this better, just saw it off there and there, get rid of those runners, glued it windows right to the edges inside. And then we got our tail lights and our rear bumper pops on. And then under the hood, of course in 70s model kit type fashion, the whole undercarriage is molded as one pan. Um, metal axles, I believe, slip through. We'll find out on the other side. Radiator and radiator housing are one piece. Engine block firewall dropping in. Very basic, very, very easy kit. Uh, good for, for starter model builders, of course. Yep, there you go. There's your metal axles with your modern 90s wheels stuck in there. Okay, so here is the body going, body and interior all complete, dropping onto the chassis all complete. And of course you get your stock hood there and your bed cover. You can paint it teal or red to match those decals, decals, whatever. Then of course there's your jack and your toolbox. Now how many of you guys in the real world jacked a car up on one of these things only to have it fall over? <laughs> this is the bumper jack, of course. The old dangerous type before we got the safer floor jacks. You know, or even the scissor type jacks are safer than that thing ever was. Okay, so here's the decal application. It says, of course, surfaces should be smooth and dust free. Cut the desired de decal from the decal sheet. Dip decal in warm water to loosen the decal from the backing paper. Place the decal in position, so there, and then slide that paper off the back. Remove any air bubbles by wiping gently. Uh, wiping gently with damp cloth, a little pin to poke out air bubbles in the middle, and grab your solva set and let that thing melt on. It says decal 7, hood, hold hood securely in place. Use small pieces of tape if necessary, making sure tape will not be anywhere under decal. And apply decal over entire area. After the decal is in place, use a sharp hobby knife to trim around the outline of the hood opening. Okay, so some of this will splash onto the fenders. And then they give you this very strange stand. You can mount this thing onto the wall and put your model on the wall. Right by your bedroom light switch. No, I wouldn't do that because you might nail into the wires. That's not safe. Okay, so yeah. Very cool. Okay, now let's grab our parts back here. We'll drop that in there. Then we'll go over and look at these things in better detail. Okay, so I thought I'd start off our review a little bit differently this time around because the model was sort of assembled in the box. I've had this for a while, so I I thought I would just, uh, you know, piece the parts together. Anyway, so this is what it would look like with that custom roof on the top and uh, the hood on and pretty much everything together without actually any work on it. So the custom top comes off. If you don't want it, that's how the car would look. And then uh, there's the pleated top with the scoop. There's some detail in the scoop. Something nice. Let's see if I can turn this around for you. Here. It's a very 60s, early 60s, late 50s type uh, custom cues on here. Probably done by George Barris or Gene Winfield or one of those guys. You can see some nice uh, Ford lettering on the trunk lid. There we go. Those nice old Ford tail lights, weren't they cool? I do believe the Falcon used sort of a British style light where it's divided into three. Not 100% sure. Note the uh, sunken window in here. And the nice detail on the wheels are on the uh, fender skirts inside whatever you want to call those. <laughs> Some ribs back here and 
and of course a uh, nice hood. The hood also has Ford molded on it, the letters. You can see that there. Okay, so we can take the hood off. You can see that, of course, you got your cross bracing in there, and there's those sunken marks. Now, this is sort of questionable here because there is some uh, underhood detailing there. So if you scrape these with your number 16 hobby blade, you might get rid of some of that uh, padding detail. But it is easy to put it back on with something, some sandpaper or whatever. So that choice is up to you. There's a little scoop there on the hood, mold it in. These are reminiscent of T-Birds and stuff of the era. Okay, so now you can see inside here now, the undercarriage is molded as a solid piece. If you guys like building slot cars, a uh, 25th scale, this is sort of like that golden model for you. Because, of course, you got the flat pan there. It's always nice to mount your motor detail in. You'll also notice that the differential and everything is molded as one underneath. Same with your exhaust. Now, the reason why I had this together is, of course, to show you this. there again for your slot car guys are nice pins under there so you can you could actually where the pegs are cut those off and drill drill right through and you can screw mount the undercarriage here to your car which of course gives you that great advantage you know so fairly simple for that just move that out of the way now notice how the interior has this nice clip there Another good place to put a screw or something, just to lock in the interior tub. Now just move the interior tub out of the way. I'll review that in a sec with the interiors. Now, that is molded to the body. I have seen this floor as separate, but look at in the hood there. It's great big mold release marks. You, of course, will need to get those out with your number 16 hobby blade. And under the hood here, get rid of those. You can put a flat piece of styrene across there. will give you a little more place for your, your hood to fit in. Now, let's see. Okay, so then getting back to the body, you have a Ranchero script right there, molded in there. Your door latch is molded on. It's quite a bit of flash to this kit. It is from an older mold. Oops. And of course your your Ford across the back. There is a gas gas cap back here on this one side only, on the driver's side. But uh, fairly simplistic. But again, very cool model. Now we'll look at the interior bucket, or the interior tub. And uh, not much to be said about this. It is molded as a one piece. And as we saw just earlier, it slips up in the body pretty easily. But there is some good detailing considering that they had to mold these on a side of a box, you know what I mean? The only thing that looks a bit odd is your window winders, which are window winder at the top and just flat so to get out of the mold at the bottom. You got the hole there on the transmission hump and your pedals are molded into the bottom. Now I do have a dashboard here which has some really good detail on it. There, of course, looks like the real thing, only smaller, as they used to say. And you got your vents on the top for your defroster on your window and that sort of thing. And all the push button stuff. Now this, once you get it painted, we'll just drop in there, glue in. So again, really simple. Steering wheel and steering column will go through that loop in the bottom. And, uh, that's about it. And of course, speaking of the steering wheel, here is the stock wheel. Very much like the Thunderbirds and that of the era. Uh, there is quite a bit of flash on this, so I'm gonna have to get in there with a, a small hobby knife. So next up, our sprue tree here is the engine block, the big Chevy motor. So we've got a right and a left hand side transmission, and there's the shifting linkages up in there. Of course, you need some rods coming out to the um, steering column. 
There's our cylinder head. I have the other one here, fell off the parts tree. <laughs> There's some good detail. Oil pan, it's got a hole in the side of the oil pan for the axle to go through. There's our intake manifold and our starter mo motor and our two exhaust manifolds, the distributor and our fan and our fan belt with the alternator, the GM Delco type, right on there. And next up we have our exhaust pipes the uh, radiator um, housing and radiator, the steering column and our firewall. And uh, if I just bring this up to the camera a little bit, you can tell there's a lot of these mold marks. There, 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 and there, there, the back of the steering column into the exhaust pipes. So you're gonna have to fill these on the exhaust pipes and then sand them down and recontour it. And there is, on the back side here, a nice radiator detail. Sort of the, the mesh and grill of it. But the back of the firewall is very plain. Whatever. And I'm sure this big hole in the firewall here is actually like a little thing like this on the Ford six cylinders. But of course you need to cut it bigger to accommodate that big Chevy V8. And moving right along, we have the wheel backings. You can see there's a lot of flash on this. Um, then we've got a two-piece toolbox here, our f uh, fender jack, and then those are the two antennas that were there, the sunken aerials. Now if I bring this up and turn it over, you'll note that there isn't really anything in the toolbox other than, of course, big mold buttons, which need to be, need to be taken out with your number 16 hobby blade. The wheel backings, there's nothing too special with them. A little bit of nice ring detail in here, but that's about it. And here we got to look at our car display stand. And well, first off, these are our seat belts, the uh, old lap belts. Uh, okay, so pretty flat on this side. And if you turn it over, you can see the nice ribs in here, which gives this quite a bit of strength. The Ranchero nameplate. And then on the bottom here, it says AMT Corporation Patent Pending. Right in there, right there. Patents Pending. So again, um, more of these mold buttons. If you want this nice and flat, number 16 Hobby Blade. But that is your stand. And last up on our gray pieces, we have this nice cover for our pickup bed. The Tanau cover, it does have all the little buttons molded in, but there is a bit of flash and whatever, especially along this edge, which is really paper thin, and it's very easy to nick it. So, just so you know. And of course, we've got these two holes here. I'm not quite sure why they were molded in. At least they don't go through. But it might be good just to give it a quick wipe with some filler and then sand it down so it's nice and flat. It does feel like there's a little bit of detail under here for like a fabric feel to it, but I don't know, it could just be sort of a, just what it was molded on. It sort of almost feels like it's from the tool itself, so the metal die, you know. Anyway. Next we have our chrome tree, which of course gives us this nice grill with the molded in headlights. Now you can get some uh, flat black and thin it down with a lot of thinner, the enamels, and give this nice grill a wash by, of course, painting in and then wiping off with a rag. And then the headlights you can put a little bit of uh, Tamiya clear over the top. Maybe even tint it with a little drop of yellow or blue. Okay, there's two, uh, two chrome-plated antennas, these nice 1990s style wheels. There's the gear shift lever for the floor shift, the rear tail lights, the bumper, a uh, rear bumper, of course, the two mirrors, the air cleaner, the big Chevy valve covers, the alternator, the carburetor, and of course, the timing chain cover and water pump. Here's the glass components for our kit. It just consists of the windshield and the back glass molded as a one piece. 
which is very uh, popular way to mold glass back in the 60s and 70s when this kit came into production. If you got your hobby saw, you can carefully saw off here and here and here and here just to get rid of this. This doesn't even connect up here. <laughs> but get rid of this from seeing it up when you flip the car over and look through the windows. The uh, headlights and taillights, of course, were molded in chrome, so that's why you got it there. The tires provided in this kit are Goodyear Eagle um, GS-Cs. These originally came with Corvette kits, and then the wheels in the 90s and that sort of crept into other model kits from AMT. They're a pretty good tire. They're wide, and they've got that um, directional tread to them, where all the tread lines are going up this way or whatever, together. So you gotta make sure that you have them rotated right on the car. So there's a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Usually, if you look really carefully along the tire edge, there's an arrow which will point in the direction. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna have them one way, and on the right-hand side, you're gonna turn them around and have them the other way. The, uh, the letters are raised, so it's very easy to paint them using either white or yellow. If you want like a NASCAR look, use your yellow. <laughs> but um, those are the tires you get. All right, so the final part of this model kit are the water slide decals. And here, as you can see, you get a choice between these red scallops or these teal scallops. And of course, we get two sets of license plates, the orange 1961 Chero New York State license plates. And then, of course, Maryland with the white and the sort of teal blue Ranchero license plates. Now I want to show you guys something cool. Back in the day when PlayStation was out there, gaining its popularity, the company came up with these little temporary tattoos. Now I happen to have four of these things. Oops. <laughs> Reaching in front of the lens. I happen to have four of them. And... I had an idea that what I would do is I would take the water slide decals and carefully cut the scallops right in half here and here and then uh, flip them right so you got teal on one side red on the other and then I was gonna put the PlayStation logos one on the hood one on the cover and then the last two on the doors and then make uh, little PlayStation consoles in 25th scale and put them in the back of the pickup bed. So then you've got this nice, like, um, mobile de demonstration car for the old PlayStation system. So if you guys are out, out there and you find these temporary tattoos, they are easy to apply. You just um, put them in position where you want them and then get the whole thing wet. Leave a wet rag on them for about five minutes and then peel off the backing paper and it should leave the image right there. So if you're resourceful out there you can customize your model in any way you see fit and I just figured this would be a cool one. So what sort of cool things do you do? Leave it in the comments below. And that will conclude our review of the 1961 Ford Ranchero Custom. Well, thank you once again for tuning in to another great unboxing for our 1961 Ford Ranchero. And hey, maybe one of these days I will get around to building it as the PlayStation car. PlayStation! <laughs> anyway, that would be really cool with those old temporary tattoos I got from way back in the day. Which is really cool because the tattoos in here are actually from PlayStation number one which I have one of those at home too. Can play Warhammer on it. <laughs> Shadows of the Horned Rat. Anyway, that's a cool game. I also have some old driving games there too. But of course, I'm one of Generation X who had all the video games, the first generation in history to actually be able to play video games, even if those were our old Atari stuff. Remember those guys? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, this specific video, with all your friends and family. And of course, click the notification bell because next week we will be looking at another car and I want you personally to be the first person to actually see that video 
The only way to do that, of course, is to pound on that bell so that when it comes up, it'll be in your feed, your YouTube video feed, when I do that video. So again, let's get this thing up to 100 likes. And uh, until next week, you can always play your PlayStation in this awesome Ranchero.